Today I want to talk to you guys about finding an authentic emotional experience in the gym and how that can take an hour or two hours. So an authentic emotional experience in the gym is what is really required to get an efficient workout. If you're not in that correct emotional place, what you're just doing is checking boxes on a piece of paper. And I call that being a CPA. You're like an accountant. You're crunching the numbers and crunch, uh, you know, cooking the books to say, well, I actually did this on paper, so that means I got it done. But, you know, more often than not, when you try to, you know, get your workouts in that way, you don't get as much done as you could. And also, you never put yourself in a position where you can break through plateaus and barriers. That's probably the biggest reason that you can't be a number cruncher in the gym or a CPA. Because you got to make quantum leaps in basketball. Like a quantum leap is when you're, you know, like an electron, you're stuck in your orbit that you're in and your energy raises and raises and raises. But no matter how much it raises, you stay in that orbit. But the quantum leap is when you get enough of a burst of energy that you change your orbit. So suddenly you're in a whole new orbit. It's like you jump to a new one. You know, that's why people say you make a quantum leap. And it's like raising your energy a little bit here and there um, isn't enough to take you to that next orbit level. Or doing the workout as it exists on paper is not enough to take you to that next orbit level. My battery's dying. Let's switch it. I learned a long time ago not to mess with that dying battery because it deletes the whole video if you let it die. So it's not enough to just do what the work is on paper because it won't take you to the next like orbit ring, that quantum jump that you need. It'll always move you a little bit incrementally further in your progress. It just won't ever allow you to transcend where you are. And your journey in basketball is so often about being able to transcend into that next level. Um, we'll talk about that later, but like that, that next level requires like this strange lightning strike of insight and uh, emotional shift, almost like a, a paradigm shift, a whole new perspective. And it's different than making progress. We'll talk about that later. But the point is that you, in order to make real progress, you need to achieve this specific emotional place in your workout. And often you're not there when you first get to the gym. Like a lot of times when I first get to the gym, I'm not even a, in a place where I want to work out at all. Like if I was just there to crunch the numbers on my piece of paper and do that workout, like I couldn't even do that. I'm that low on energy and low on motivation. It's okay to admit that. Just low on everything. You're not in where you need to be. But a mistake that a lot of young players make is that they go to the gym with this low energy, but then they think, I can get through the workout that I have here on paper that I had written out down before. I can get through it. And then they start to go through it and, you know, they work their way through it. And then when they're done, they're like, I did it. I did my workout. Checked all the boxes on my paper. But you didn't really. Um, it's better than doing nothing, of course infinitely better than doing nothing, but it's not what you need. So the way that I try to orient myself in workouts to evaluate if I, I did it to, you know, to get there is that I have to get to a specific emotional place. And that's really, really difficult to articulate. It's really tough to tell you what that place is. And a lot of it comes from experience, but, but maybe it starts with an awareness that that is the goal. So you can start to be aware that like, oh, what is this emotional place I got to get to? Maybe that question itself will help you to start to have your antenna up for detecting it. Um, yeah, so, so toss that sheet in the trash, the workout sheet, toss that away. The only thing that that's there for is to make sure that you don't do nothing with your day. So I'm sure most of you are above that space where you're gonna do nothing. Uh, actually, I, I take that back. Probably most of you are not above that space. You know, when I was young, I was in that space so often, like just struggling to not do nothing today. And for the record, I always, did not do nothing, always. But uh, it's a struggle. So, you know, what I learned later is that, is that your workout is something that only you and, and honesty can sort of evaluate. Uh, the piece of paper can't evaluate it for you. And to, for me to get to that emotional place, like today in my workout, it took me two hours to get there. 
and it's not uncommon to take an hour and a half, two hours to get there. But you know it when you're there, man. I think runners would probably really relate to this when they call it a runner's high. It's probably very similar. Uh, I don't like to use the phrase being in the zone. I think that's kind of overused. Um, people just use it as an umbrella term for everything. But uh, for me, like this emotional place, it feels like uh, I'm a bad mother effer and that I got everybody in the gym looking at me because I'm walking a certain way. And everyone kind of knows that like I want problems and not because I'm angry, but because I think the whole thing is kind of funny and I'm a little bit sinister and I like it, you know, and, and I lose my inhibitions. Like I walk around the gym, like with my tongue out and I celebrate after lifts. Like I'll do a lift and I'll, I'll walk around and like celebrate, like beat my chest. Basically I just don't care. Like I'm not there to work out and to check the boxes on my piece of paper. I'm there I'm there to be something. I'm there to like, to channel something, to be something different. And that's, that comes from an emotional place. So that's kind of an indicator that I'm there. And then the other indicator is that being in that place just, just increases the intensity of my workout without me having to try. So if you've ever done supersets, they're very difficult because you go from one exercise to the next. And when I'm in the correct emotional place, my body wants to superset and it doesn't like not supersetting. So for example, I'll be doing a shoulder press and then I'll throw them down and I'll go to rest for a second because that's what you're supposed to do. And then my body will be like, uh-uh, we ain't doing that, my guy. Boom, get up. And I'll be like, let's go uh, do some you know, lateral jumps. And we'll do like a set of lateral jumps, even though it makes no sense. Like I'm doing arms, why would I do lateral jumps? So, so sometimes I have to, um, you know, tell myself, we're not doing lateral jumps right now. We can superset, but let's do something that makes a little bit of sense. Like, let's superset shoulders with like a, a shoulder stretch. That makes a little bit of sense. But the point is that my, my body doesn't want to sit still. Like, it, it wants more. It wants more of what you got. It wants more. Like, it, it's almost like uh, it becomes hungry. And I can feel every muscle in my body, like, becoming hungry. You know, almost as if I can feel my muscles, like, talking, like... When I'm not in the correct emotional place, they're kind of saying, I know I got to work out. I'm willing to do the work, put the heavy weight in front of me and I'll move it up and down. But when I'm in the right emotional place, my body's like, ah, I want more. And my muscles are all talking like, I don't care what you got. I don't care. I want more. And, and my muscles are like, that's the weight you brought for me. Why don't we take it over here and lift it in ways that you never thought were possible? You know, and then the other thing that my muscles say when I'm in this correct emotional place is they tell me to do more explosive work like plyometrics. They're thirsty for plyometrics and they're not satisfied with strength based lifting. Strength based lifting is like, you know, a rep range of maybe like five to nine reps and really heavy weight. And, and it's a lot of fun sometimes, but when I'm in the right emotional place for where I need to be to get better at basketball, my muscles are saying to me, I need explosive plyometrics. They need it. It's like a little animal inside of you that, that suddenly like grows up your neck and takes hold of your brain and it's like, this is what we're doing, my guy. You know, that's how I know I'm in the right emotional place. And again, you're not there when you go to the gym. You're not there at all. It takes you a long time to get there. So, so really the point of this video is, is to tell you that you need to have patience and give yourself time to get there because it's almost like revving up an engine. It takes time. And part of the patience is to not be too hard on yourself about the fact that you're not in the correct place when you get to the gym. Cause that's real common is like beating yourself up. Like how come when I get to the gym, I'm not ready to go. And like, how come, you know, the motivational videos that I watch, they tell me to be an animal. They tell me to get after it. And it's like, I'm just not able to get after it. What's wrong with me? You know, you don't need to beat yourself up like that. You need to instead be patient and be like, this could take an hour until I'm in the right place. It could take two hours until I'm in the right place. And hey guys, if you are not a professional athlete, then you don't have two hours to get into the right place. I understand. So this channel is not for you. And if you're a kid, you don't have two hours either. But when I was a kid, I put in ball in my hands three hours a day, minimum, minimum. So sometimes it would be four hours a day, sometimes four and a half. 
rarely did it get to five hours with a ball in my hand. People that tell you that are usually full of crap. But uh, so it was ball in my hand, three hours minimum, plus plyometrics, plus weightlifting, plus any kind of stretching. I did a lot of stretching when I was young and rehab and like movement based stuff. So it ended up be always being about four and a half hours anyway. So look, the point is, the point is, when you're young, taking an hour to get into the right emotional place is doable. And when I was young, I was very aware of the fact that in my three hour window of ball in my hand work, I wasn't going to get all of my efficient work in until hour three. So the first two hours were primarily going to be trying to get that animal to crawl up my neck and take control of my brain. So during those two hours, I would still try to get repetitions in that were developing my coordination. Most of that time would be spent doing like just normal ball handling, like walking up and down the court, trying to dribble it through my legs without losing it as I walk, you know, in step with my walk. Or a lot of just fundamental turnaround jumpers is what I used to do during those first two hours. The point is that it wasn't the type of explosive movements and emotionally inspired movements that give you that transcendent opportunity. So those are the first two hours. But then in that last hour, I would get in a hundred times the work that I did in the first two hours, which seems crazy because you should be tired at that point. But it was far more intense, far more explosive. But I don't say 100 times because it's 100 times the work output. It's not. That's not possible. I say 100 times because it's 100 times more just correct, oriented in the right, like, metaphysical direction. There's a big element of divinely inspired creativity that plays into this. It has to do with this big soup of dreaming and wanting, hoping, and then role-playing, and then suddenly being inspired by a move you just did. And all of those things I just mentioned, they catch fire. You do the move, you watch yourself do it, and you're inspired, and suddenly your dream like fire gets ignited under it and your hope fire gets ignited and your creativity fire and then the role the role playing that you're doing like i'm a hero i'm an nba player i'm you know whatever the role uh, you know i'm a dunking champion the role playing has a fire lit under it and suddenly you have a different energy and this is that last hour of work this is that emotional place it's a very inspired place completely contrasted by when you first walk in the gym. You're uninspired and just wanting to get through it. Now, that's not every day. Of course, there's tons of days where I walk into the gym and I'm ready to go. Like, I don't even have, like, I throw my bag down and I hit the weights and I hit the court and I can't even decide what to do first because I'm just so ready and I have to pull myself back and say, whoa, 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 we got to warm up. Like, I have, I've had infinite days like that. Not literally, of course. But uh, so many, too many to count. But, um, but what I'm talking about in this video is too important and too frequent to ignore. And it's very strange. Uh, most people, you know, what, you know what's funny is that most basketball players will never experience what I'm talking about. Because, I mean, how many players, honestly, have ever gone into the gym for like three hours or four hours by themselves? Almost no, like really almost nobody. I really want, I want to know what the answer to that question is. Like maybe, maybe 0.1% of players in their whole life have ever gone into the gym for three hours all by themselves to work. So, you know, we can say like a, a runner's high, but this is like a basketball high. To me, when I'm in this basketball high, it's most notably m marked by dunking. And I would venture to guess that my athleticism and my dunking ability and my quickness all came from that last hour of work. 
when people would come into the gym to witness that last hour of work, they were floored because I swear I would be sprinting while like half dancing. All, all of my movement would be like skipping up and down, you know, like, like I got too much energy, I'm going to blow up. And then of course I would like drop to my knees and like rest for like a whole minute. You know, I'm, I'm not an iron man. I'm not a machine, you know, uh, but then I'd pop back up and I'd go in and I'd be doing like, you know, three or four crazy dunks, pretending like I'm killing people. And then I'd fall to my knees and have to rest for like two minutes. Um, Again, I'm not a machine. I'm trying to paint an accurate picture of what these workouts look like. But still, the people watching them are like, this guy is possessed. Possessed is, is like, that's what I'm getting at here, is the emotional place that you want to be in to get a transcendent workout is you feel like you're possessed. So I'm sure you guys have felt like that at some time in your workout life for something. And what I have discovered is that you can get there despite not being anywhere close to there when you first go to the gym. I've found you can get there and that matters because you need to get there. You need to get there as much as possible. So you don't want to be dismayed by the fact that you're not there when you go to the gym and you also do not want to absolve yourself to just checking the boxes on your workout sheet and then leaving because you can get there. It just takes time. So maybe one of the most important things with this is to give yourself that time. Like I'll give you an example. So today I went to the gym, a normal day, like any other day, but I don't have something planned afterwards and I go to the gym when I know that it's going to be open for four hours. So it leaves me the opportunity to get to that emotional place. Should it take me a long time to get there? It's about patience. And if you don't give yourself that uh, time cushion structure around your workouts, then you lose the opportunity to ever get to that space. And, uh, you know, sometimes that can be great, by the way, um, you know, having that sense of urgency in your workouts, like I only have 45 minutes to work, the gym's going to close. Sometimes that's the best thing for you. We'll talk about that later. But, you know, like I say it, it, on this channel, everything I talk about is one tool in your belt. It's not a magic bullet that will work every time. So like what I'm talking about today is having extreme patience and giving yourself a time cushion around your workout of four hours. That is a tool in your belt to use sometimes. But another tool in your belt is let's plan to go to the gym when there's only 45 minutes of opening time left so that I'm forced into a dramatic sense of urgency. And it's going to force me to work my butt off really quick. And, you know, that's something I do also. Even though these two are contrasting approaches, they're both correct. And the fact that I know how to do both of them makes me that much stronger in my basketball life. There are tools in my belt. But anyways, today we're talking about the first one. And, um, you know, how can we sum, sum this up or, or add more to it? It's that emotional demon that you're trying to unleash, and it's only that emotional demon that will make your workout what it needs to be to transcend. Without it, man, you're just punching the clock. Sorry to tell you. Even if you're following your, your plan very well on paper, like, look, my squats went up 20%, my bench press has gone up you know, 30% in the last six months, I'm gaining weight, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. It, man, I'm telling you, it doesn't translate into results on the court. The only thing that translates is when you get that demon to come out of you in workouts because the demon is creative and the demon is also connected through your gut to your dreams and to what you've been asking of the universe. Like your workout on paper is not connected to any of that. Only that demon is. Like he lives inside of you and he's been trained through words every night to know where to go. He's like a little bloodhound that you've been training. Like when the, the bird drops over there, you go jumping through the, through the woods to go fetch the bird and bring it back. 
he's a little bloodhound demon. And for that, you know, he, he's an animal that has uh, a mind of his own. And when you let him take control of you, he takes his mind of his own, takes you in that direction that he knows only he knows how to go. But your paper can't take you there. You know, you're, you're add 10% to your squats this week on rep five, on set three, that can't take you there and it never will. It'll always get you some results, but some results is not good enough. Only the demon who possesses you will get you there. He's got to crawl up your neck and he, he usually doesn't wake up until he knows you're really serious. Like he doesn't wake up until hour one, hour two. And then he's like, oh, this guy means business. I'm going to show him what business is. And then he comes out. So that's it. Um, what else? Okay, maybe, maybe the most important thing I'll say is that, nah, you know what? I'll leave that for another video. Y'all can chill.